we're making a video on how to buy a second generation Mini Cooper. That's roughly the years 2007 to 2013. Those are the cars where they first introduced the turbo. And kind of the easiest way to tell, to tell them apart is the side scuttle here. So the second gens look like kind of like this. They kind of lead into the bonnet here. On the first generation car, it's kind of an oval look and it stays inside the fender. And the third generation car kind of looks like this one here. When you first walk up to the Mini that you like and you see it at a dealer or private party or whatever, first thing you want to do is make sure the car hasn't been an accident or has any major cosmetic flaws. You're going to want to check the windshield as well for rock chips or cracks. You're going to want to make sure that you have a good quality auto glass as well. Of course, Mini branded is the best. It says Mini right on it. If it's safe like glass, you might want to think about that a little bit because that stuff cracks pretty easily. Uh, looking for panel gaps, which is kind of important. All of these gaps here need to be lined up. This part is separate from this part, which is separate from this part, and the bumper. And if there's any front end damage, it's probably going to show up. This car, you can tell the panel gap is, doesn't quite match the other side. It's a little bit uh, overhang here, a little bit too close. and then here between the fender and the wheel arch it's sticking out a little bit too far uh, you're going to just want to make sure you've got enough remaining tire life and if you don't consider the budget that you might need to buy tires as well another wear item on the mini coopers uh, is the control arm bushings after about 80 th or 90,000 miles or so they can wear and cause a little bit of shudder as you're going down the road uh, and the simplest way to check if you have a control arm bushing problem is to kick the tires so if you kick them and they don't move at all, like this car, you're fine. So this one, you can see there's a little bit of jiggle. This is uh, probably about 75% bad. If it was a little bit worse, I'd think about replacing it. Not every car has rust problems, so probably the quickest way to figure out whether the car has a, might have a rust issue is to look under the car where rust starts. Now this car doesn't have rust, but if it did, right here on the subframe, this is behind the front wheel, this is where you'd see it start first. On the back side of the door, so there's a drain hole here, for example, on the lower corner of the door. This is where water comes out, and usually rust is gonna form in this area because water tends to sit here. It's very important also to make sure you're getting the vehicle that you think you're getting. If you wanna get a clean title, or if you're getting a car that has a salvage or a rebuild title, it's not necessarily a bad thing depending on uh, what you find out about the car. Another thing you can do is uh, get the VIN, the vehicle identification number off of the car. It's usually shown right on the bottom corner of the windshield right here. And you could take the last seven digits of that number and do a Google search for BMW or Mini VIN check. There's a lot of free sites. One of them is bimmer.work, W-O-R-K. First thing, if you see this engine, don't buy it. Just kidding, actually. But this engine, this valve cover you see here, this is called the N14 engine. So this one, you can tell it's an N14 engine. The coil packs are exposed. These little wires here are your giveaway. If it's this engine, be a little more careful because it's got the most problems out of all of the second gen. Just be a little careful if you're gonna buy one of these because they, they have a lot of problems. And probably the best thing you can do is find a N14 car that someone else has thrown a lot of money at and uh, they've done all the repairs. Fluid leaks, uh, oil filter housing leak, and the turbo feed line. Sometimes on high mileage cars, the turbo itself can fail. Uh, the best way to tell whether that's an issue is um, drive a couple of cars, and if one of them feels low on power, that one might have a turbo issue. Another thing you want to check is how often has the car had oil changes? And you can never really trust anyone to tell you how many times the oil's been changed or how frequently it's been changed. But there's a secret trick that you can figure out how often the oil's been changed. Just, just take the oil cap off, shine your flashlight in there, you see how it's kind of a nice golden brown color? The, the closer that is to silver, the, the better condition it is. This, this car has been pretty well maintained. So I happen to have a cylinder head off the car here from a high, higher mileage car that probably didn't have as many oil changes as it should have. And you can see, look, right here, there's a carbon buildup. This is what happens when you don't change your oil regularly enough. The detergents can't suspend the, the dirt that gets into the engine. Other than that, just look generally for signs of care. Look for like missing fasteners or things that out, are out of place because that's a pretty good sign of um, somebody who's working on the car who didn't know what they were doing. The next step we need to do is go road test it. 
But before that, uh, we want to make sure the interior of the car looks good. Of course, look for normal wear items. Other than that, the second generation Mini, honestly, the interior build quality is pretty good. You don't have too many electronic issues, but you do want to go through and make sure everything's working. So now we're going to take it out on the road and give it a test drive. And when we're driving, we're actually going to try to drive the car a little bit hard uh, to uncover any issues. Uh, suspension, we're going to want to make sure the car tracks straight. We're going to look for any uh, vibrations or knocks or shutter. And as we're test driving, it's also good to take the vehicle on a different variety of different conditions and that includes getting it up to highway speed because there can be uh, shimmy or shutter or vibrations that only happen when you're at higher speed so 60 miles an hour or so oh, another meeting it's also important to get the car up to operating temperature especially like an automatic transmission some of them have issues when uh, the car is at temperature, but when it's cold, nothing, it, it drives fine. So you want to make sure, especially if you're getting an automatic transmission, that, that it's nice and hot. And that takes about 15 minutes of driving. The clutch pedal should feel moderate. If it's super stiff, that's a sign that you're kind of near the end of life of a clutch. After the test drive, if you're still interested in the car, it's time to do the pre purchase inspection. And first thing we're going to do is plug in the scanner and see what we get. So it reads OBD2 codes and it also reads BMW codes. So I'm going to go to the BMW option. Okay, it's done scanning and it's found a couple of codes, which is kind of interesting because the check engine light was off, but we're seeing a fault here. I've got a uh, air mass sensor plausibility code. We also have a code for the tire pressure monitoring system, which I knew about because the light was on for this car but this will tell you exactly what's going on. All right, I'm pretty happy with what I found, so now I'm gonna go under the car and show you guys what else I can find underneath. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is look for signs of oil leaks. Uh, I did a recent, this car had a recent repair, so there's a little bit of moisture here, uh, but it's pretty dry under here. Don't know how that got in there. This is the common place where you're gonna see oil leakage on these guys. Uh, it's kind of on the seam between the bell housing and the engine itself. Uh, this is where the oil collects when you have an oil filter housing gasket or a turbo feed line leak. I don't see any leakage around the oil pan, so there's no oil pan gasket leak or front main seal leak. I'm going to peel back this liner here and look up. I'm going to look at the inside of the belt and look for any cracks, or, and it looks pretty good. And then I'm going to look up in the gap here as well between the drive shaft and the oil pan and I'm looking at the bottom of the water pump and trying to see if there's any white crust which would indicate a water pump leak or a coolant bypass tube leak. I'm also going to check the CV boots. You want to kind of push on them and make sure that they're not torn. They tend to tear on the narrow end right where they clamp down onto the axle. You're also to check the passenger side or the right side of the car inner boot as well. We got the car up in the air now, so check the wheels for bearing play and ball joint. So the way you do that is to pull the wheel and wiggle back and forth. Right here I'm checking also to make sure the tie rod end is not loose. Basically you're looking for any extra play and, and there isn't any here. I'm going to look up here into the strut and I'm going to look to see if there's a bunch of goo leaking out here. If you see like dirt and grime here, that's a sign that your, your struts are leaking. I'm also going to look at the brakes the best I can through the wheel here to check for how much uh, brake pad wear I have. I'm also going to look for any torn seals for the ball joints. These all look good. And of course under here I'm going to look for rust as well. Uh, you can see it's starting a little bit on the corners of the subframe very, very early, nothing to worry about. Check the exhaust and make sure that there's no uh, no leaks. Of course, I'm also checking for any uh, missing or misplaced fasteners, and I'm looking uh, for any signs of undercarriage damage as well from running over stuff, and I don't see anything like that. All right, that's all there is to it. That's what to look for when buying a second generation Mini Cooper. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for the tools I use for this video. Thanks for watching and bye-bye. Also, be sure to check out my other videos where I show you how to fix the Mini you just bought.